In this video, we are going to see three concepts. One is modified internal rate of return, another one is modified net present value, and then you are going to see multiple internal rate of return. So I'm just going to start with my modified internal rate of return. So this modified internal rate of return and modified net present value is having a close relationship with time disparity. Okay, let us see these steps of time disparity once again uh, to recall the same. We know that we are going to find three steps. One is terminal value of cash inflow, second one is modified net present value, modified IRR. So here we are going to see the individual methods of modified NPV and modified IRR. So what is the formula for terminal value of cash inflows? It is nothing but cash flow into 1 plus, 1 plus R power N minus T. So here as I said in the time disparity video, this R is your reinvestment rate. Then what we will be finding? We will be finding our modified net present value and the terminal value into 1 divided by 1 plus K, the old power N minus I. So the modified NPV is nothing but your present value of terminal cash inflow minus present value of cash outflow. So yes, instead of your present value of cash inflows, I'm just going to use present value of terminal cash inflow. Apart from that, everything is same. And when it comes to modified IRR, we know the formula terminal value divided by initial investment, the old power 1 by n minus 1. So we already know that at modified internal rate of return, present value of terminal cash inflows is equal to present value of cash outflow. So again, the one thing to be noted here is instead of present value of cash inflows, we are going to use the present value of terminal cash inflows. So the one common step to be done under the two methods that is modified net present value and modified internal rate of return is you must be computing your terminal value. Okay, let us understand this better by seeing an example. Okay, let me read the question for you. So the investment comes to be rupees. 1,36,000. The tenure of the project is for 5 years and you have been provided with what your cash inflow. So your total amount comes to be rupees 1,80,000. Okay, let us start our sum. So at uh, modified internal rate of return, we already see the formula that is it is present value of terminal cash inflows present value of cash outflow. So one thing to be noted here is when you are going to do a sum in your examination or whenever you are practicing that always write the formulas first. Step one is that you have to be computing your terminal value. Yes. Let us compute the same with the help of the tabular column. So the first one is here. The second one is cash inflow then calculation part. So finally I will be arriving with my terminal cash flow. Okay. Tenure is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We are going to compound the same. It is 30,000 into 1 plus 0 0.08. 8 percentage. How does this 8 percentage come? We have already seen in the previous concept that is under time disparity. This terminal value is to be found at the reinvestment rate. Reinvestment rate will be mentioned in the question. If it is not mentioned in the question, you can take an assumption and you can proceed the sum thereon. Okay, so here let me take the reinvestment rate as 8 percentage. Okay, okay, let's start our computation part. So this 5 minus 1, right? Because I have to compound it for only 4 years from the end of the first year till the fifth year. So same format is being used for all the 5 years. So I will be arriving with my present value of terminal cash flows. After that your terminal value is nothing but the summation of all your future values. Right? Yes. Okay. Please follow the video. The same calculation part is being repeated again and again. So yeah, finally I am having 20,000. Now taking the sum I am arrived with my terminal cash flow, right? Yes. So guys, let's see in a time graph. So this is my year 0 where I am just making my investment of rupees 1,36,000. At the end of year 1, I am just getting 30,000. And the end of year 2, I am just getting 40,000. End of year 3, 60,000. And end of year 4, 30,000. And finally, I am just getting 20,000. So your terminal value is nothing but you are going to get an amount at the end of the fifth year, right? 
yeah you have to compound this for four years right between one to two and between two to three and between three to four and again between four to five and when it comes for four forty thousand you're going to compound it for three times when it comes for between four and five you're going to compound it for one time so this is how this five minus one five minus two five minus three five minus four works this is your practical concept so to understand the concept better so we already know that future value is nothing but present value into one plus r power n so after uh, finding the value for each individual year, I will be adding everything. So that is my terminal cash flow. Okay, let us move further and see how to compute my modified internal rate of return. Again, write the formula. So present value of terminal cash inflow is equal to present value of cash outflows. So we have already found our terminal cash inflow. Now we are going to find our present value of terminal cash inflow so it is nothing but terminal value into 1 divided by 1 plus k the whole power of i here i'm just not going to write the value for k because k is what we are going to find so this is k is our modified internal rate of return so is equal to present value of cash outflow where my initial investment is 1 lakh 36 thousand into 1 divided by 1 plus k the whole power is zero since it is made in the year zero so after solving each and every step i will be arriving with my modified internal rate of return if you have followed my time disparity video this or these steps it is already been discussed in depth right okay let us move further so by solving so yeah again i'm just um, writing the steps how to find your root using your calculator for recalling purpose so there are totally five steps yes so you have to enter the value and press root for 12 times and you should be subtracting minus one and you should be dividing with n that is the nth root and you should be adding one again and you are going to press x is equal to for 12 times to arrive your answer so now after subtracting one from the answer you are getting your k which is 9.45 percentage which is called your modified internal rate of return simple right before concluding a modified internal rate of return there are a few points to be discussed okay which may be asked in your two marks so what are the benefits of using modified internal rate of return instead of our normal internal rate of return so this modified internal rate of return helps to eliminate the multiple internal rate okay let us see what is meant by multiple internal rate let us understand this by drawing a graph let us take a project is there is this only case that this project will be providing only cash inflows after the initial investment is made no yes it may provide cash inflows in between the tenure yeah so what happens in that case so in that case we may have two internal rate of return so if that is the case then whenever the cost of capital is less than your internal rate of return that is your both internal rate of return then it is easy to make a decision however otherwise the internal decision rule may turn out to be misleading as the project should only be invested if cost of capital is between irr1 and irr2 okay so this is the case your cost of capital should always be lesser than what your internal rate of return 1 and internal rate of return 2 in that case you can go along with the problem what if this cost of capital lies between the to internal rate of return in that case if you are making a decision then that decision would be a misleading this is the idea about the multiple internal rate so there is no problem to be seen here you, you just keep this concept in your mind okay it's just an informative part okay let us move further guys so it addresses the reinvestment rate issue that is modified internal rate of return addresses the reinvestment rate issue and produces result which is consistent with the net present value yes and this method is also called as terminal value method because you're going to consider the terminal value of cash inflow so guys now we are coming to a conclusion for modified internal rate of return okay now we are going to see about the modified net present value we know that what is the formula for net present value 
very very simple right this present value of cash inflows minus present value of cash outflows it is benefit minus cost when it comes to modified net present value what we are going to do instead of considering your cash inflow i'm just going to consider my terminal cash inflow that is present value of terminal cash inflow minus present value of cash outflow let us see the um structural way of doing this sum okay so first step is to find your terminal cash inflow using your reinvestment rate so if it is provided in the question please take it or assume so what is the formula we order cash flow into 1 plus r power n minus t r is your reinvestment rate so then you have to compute your present value of terminal cash inflows so what is its formula it is terminal value into 1 divided by 1 plus k the old power n where k is your cost of credit if you have already studied time disparity this is this is a just a piece of cake because we are going to follow the same steps here and finally you are just going to find your present value of cash outflow again it's going to be stay the same so by equating this 2 and 3 you will be finding your modified net present value okay by this i'm just going to close this video there are only couple of concepts left let us learn that in our next video thank you